Hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar is about how to draw manga action poses in Clip Studio Paint, presented by White Manga. Some housekeeping items that I will tell you about. The webinar will be approximately one hour long. All attendees will be muted. Question and answer session will be during the last 15 minutes of the webinar. Attendees can ask questions in the GoToWebinar question box right away. Due to time constraints, not all questions will be answered. Webinar will be recorded. Recording will be shared on social media and will be sent via email to all registrants and attendees. Panelists are Fahim Nias, Joanna Brower, Marie Quinones, myself, and White Manga. For those of you who are joining us for the very first time and have never heard about Clip Studio Paint, Clip Studio Paint is your all-in-one solution for stunning, ready-to-publish illustrations, comics, manga, and animations. Learn more at clipstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com. And with that, we'd like to pass the reins of the webinar over to the artist White Manga and his presentation, How to Draw Manga Action Poses in Clip Studio Paint. Thank you. I'm happy to be here, uh, honored to join the webinar and show you guys what I can do and how you guys can use Clip Studio Paint, like thank Clip Studio Paint, Graphicsly, uh, inside the AM team for making this happen. Um, and hopefully I can help you guys on your journey on how to draw, specifically how to draw poses and how I show you guys my approaches within Clip Studio Paint. Um, I use Clip Studio Paint for my series. Uh, I have a series called Apple Black. I have another one called Bakasi, both published and serialized in Saturday AM and PM respectively. And uh, we are kind of, we are a digital shonen and seinen manga anthology and we have a list of series within. We also have our mobile app that you guys can go check out, available on iOS and Android, and we have free magazine issues for everyone to go check out. My series here is Apple Black, and I use Clip Studio Paint to put together my pages with uh, tone and just do all sorts of cool stuff that I think you guys would appreciate and love to learn. But here in this video, we're gonna be focusing on how to draw the pose. And so hopefully there is some experience here that some of you guys have with how to, just practicing on how to draw, like we're not going to be going through the complete basics from scratch of how to draw. I'm just, it, all that kind of stuff takes a lot of time. Uh, we're gonna be trying to do poses without any, without too much external help with or 3D models and things like that. Just showing you guys my approach without all that kind of stuff. It's not gonna happen overnight, but hopefully what you learn in this webinar today would speed up your process and uh, send you down the right path um, while you're trying to put that together. Again, hope you guys are staying safe at this crazy times. You stay indoors and uh, you can check out our app, check out our website, uh, check out Apple Black and more. So going into these, into uh, how to draw poses over here, I am using, it doesn't really matter. First off, when I'm trying to put all these things together, there are a mixture of things I like to think about uh, while putting this together. Uh, one of the things, one of the things I put together, uh, think about is the character, increase the brush size over here. Here you have your tool, a shortcut would just be P. If you hit it again, you get pencil. I like the P, go to the real G pen to mimic that natural, traditional uh, texture of uh, the pen to paper. I'm gonna increase the brush size a little bit. And uh, one of the things I think about is character. Well, I don't need to write it. But character, uh, what, the, what type of character it is, the size, who, are they like a menacing type, costume, any accessories they have. And then expression, we're talking facial expressions, but also body expressions. Sometimes you can kind of tell the vibe of a character without having to see their face, the way they, the way their fingers are positioned, the way the body is pos uh, positioned, are their joints relaxed? And sometimes you can convey the type of character that person is without even having to show their face, right? Uh, 
and then you start thinking of the pose and sometimes you can have several iterations in your mind or you can sketch out several iterations of the pose in your mind I'm going to go shortcut e right here just to erase all this uh, shortcut p going back to it and um the, the, those are the things i think about first and then i started to think about the camera angle i want to show the character from and what kind of short foreshortening and or uh, or perspective is going to come into play any maybe symbolism that goes into the character angles maybe i'm showing the character from below because we're trying to give the character that sense of a menacing evil character that you look up to makes them more of a daunting figure i also have um the environment comes into play thinking about that as well as maybe what parts i'm going to show because let's say you're working for uh trying to create an animation or a comic i mean and you just want a panel you just want a panel sometimes you also have to think of think of uh how much you actually want to show the character and this is just real simple over here and we'll, uh, i'll i'll do something a little more detailed uh, showing you guys the whole thought process. But those are the things I think about. Character expression, uh, knowing the pose, camera angles, environments, and those kind of things. And then, now, I'm going to take you through my thought process. One of the things you do when you're putting, after you've thought about the character a little bit, when I'm trying to put the illustration together, the first phase I think about is like the really sketchy phase. You, you want to think in layers. Right, and the first layer of thinking would be to figure out the pose, but you're doing a lot of sketchy lines, trying to find it. First thing, like we said earlier, I thought about the character. Uh, let's say you want to think about the expression, but also the foreshortening perspective, and if there's a character we want to see from above, you kind of maybe you can have your give yourself some guidelines in the beginning to let you know that as we go like upwards everything we're drawing is kind of going to be smaller and then because of the structure of the body some parts will be covered and some parts won't and i'm going to be thinking in really really rough lines and i'll be sketching very go very loose sketching very loosely until i get the line that i actually want so let's say zoom in a little bit more so let's say if this is I know the head is going to be here. You're using very basic shapes to find what you're looking for. You know, the next is going to be here. And let's say if it's a really big muscular character, you can make that neck a little thicker. Almost like a mannequin. And we're just going to be going step by step over here. So getting that upper tor uh, torso. And the ear is going to, another ear is going to be here as well. Uh, the other arm's going to be here, and as we're coming down, we're getting we're going to be getting bigger. One thing you can do is actually I'm going to shift this whole thing. We're in a separate layer just to make make things easier for ourselves. I uh, do a shortcut M marquee tool. I pick the rectangle just to select and um, just to drag it, have it be a little more centered. Uh, and the control D to get out of that. Hit P again. And as you're coming down, you want to be making making sure that the arm is getting bigger. It'll also help if you have somewhat of an understanding of the human anatomy, if this is a human character or a humanoid type character. Uh, some one tip you can do is maybe do a shape to just represent where the fist is going to be already. And then you're just kind of connecting the dots. And it's getting bigger. In some cases, maybe what you want it to be like so. And that's kind of how you, almost like a mannequin, you're figuring things out. The other shoulder, or the other side of the shoulder is going to be around here, but we know that it's going to be covered a bit. And, uh, and then you do the same thing. But here, we have these lines again just keeping that perspective and so if the if the arm is here and the character has the uh the arm down we want the fist to automatically be somewhere here so you can use these guidelines to help you figure know where things go 
right? And again, you're thinking in layers also to the point where you'll, you you want to know what, what's going to happen with the foreshortening and that's kind of like what parts of the body are going to block other parts of the body. So we might not see all of this hand because the legs, again, getting bigger as we come down, are going to be blocking parts of that. And here we have somewhat of a dynamic, very simple sketch uh, uh, figuring out this body pose. And then this is just that first step, right? Of a very loose, rough sketch to let you figure out what's going on with the illustration, what parts of the illustration. In fact, actually, let me keep this going back. That way, if the if the knee is over here, then the the, the knee will actually be lower down uh, down there as well. But here again, like I said, we're just figuring stuff out, and this is where you want to do all your thinking. You want to make sure that you figure out exactly what you want to do before you actually go in with details and start the inking, which would be something where, you know, you have an, another layer. We create another layer over here really simply. Uh, sorry about my cat in the background. Please keep quiet, please. Uh, move that move that down. Go make that black so we can actually see the lines. I have the layer above. Make the lines a little thicker. And then that's when you come in and add, you know, more details. But before that step, because it's still very loose, using a Command Z to just go back, it's, it's, it's still very loose. After this step, let's call it the really rough sketch. What you want to do is maybe reduce reduce the opacity of that. Let me give it like a maybe 30. And then you want to have another layer doing the same thing, but now in more detail. But in this, and let's call this layer uh, the pencils. It's also a sketch or a pencil, whatever, but it's in more detail. That way, when you're actually doing the inking, you are basically just tracing your own lines. So with the rough sketch, you are figuring everything out, figuring out the body pose, and which I feel like is the most difficult part of everything, and finding out where you want things to be, where you want uh, certain lines to go, and, uh, and all of that. And once you have that figured out, the pencils, a way you then come in, adding more detail, fingers, uh, face, and just making everything work there, clothing, folds, all of that. And then the inking is where, You've done all the thinking, like all the thinking is done, then it's time for the inking. You've done the thinking, it's time for the inking. And you're basically just tracing your own, your own lines. And that, that should make things, make things easier. So let's do something completely new here. Uh, this was somewhat simple. A little, it, it was a little difficult because of the camera angle we chose, one of the daunting character, all of that. But, you know, we can do even simpler simpler poses here, which is what I actually recommend you start with. But I just want to show you, give you guys a nice thought process, at least my thought process on how I approach doing uh, illustrations like that. So I'm going to do like a simple pose of a, say a samurai character, and I'm going to do a couple in uh, the rough, in the rough sketch. I like to do, I like to start with, um, with the head most of the time and then you know think of that mannequin sometimes when you see a character kind of bending down crouching um maybe about to approach in a very in a some in an action pose go move this again give me, give me a bit the shoulders tend to they tend to kind of start somewhere somewhere here right and you can give the face some of the, the the cross guidelines just let them know that the head is kind of tilted down a little bit because so, so the, these are parts of the things i'm thinking about right the character and like the looseness of the pose and what joints like what joints are being taken advantage of here so it, it looks more natural when a lot of things are happening at the same time when you draw a character let's say in a character sheet and the character is actually just standing straight it, it, 
it could seem unnatural. Let's, let's say if we saw the character from a side view, they're not just going to be straight, right? There's going to be a lot of bending and say, say you know, the torso is kind of tilted that way and then the legs are kind of bending. And let's say if the character is somewhat of a cocky type character, maybe they're looking down on you. So their heads are maybe tilted backwards a little bit. Or if they are, you know, uh, very lazy type character, maybe the hands are coming down and the, the torso is tilted backwards, or like you're tilting forward, so rather, and they have their, your knees bent a little bit, and then they're looking down a little bit. So all these things are, they come into play when you're putting together, together your character, right? So the, the body has expressions. So do so do like fingers, and there's a there's a lot of stuff that you have to think about that goes through your mind to make the pose seem more natural. And one of the things I recommend you guys do is actually in all media you consume, whether it be film or other comics, other illustrators, when you see a pose you like, grab it. I used to have I used to have a folder where I put anything I liked and I always saved it for if I knew I wanted to do comics and any interesting pose from any illustrator that I saw uh, online. I always grabbed the image and I just saved it and I used it to practice. And I'll show you guys a, uh, a nice way to practice, a way I, use, I, I practiced before that I feel come in really handy. Anyways, back to this uh, character, maybe a samurai crouching about to strike. The shoulders kind of pop up because the neck is somewhere around here. Right, we see the neck a little bit, but it's it's blocked by the head because he's tilting. So we have the shoulder. The shoulder is not just is not just normal like that. It's also bent a little bit. And this is this comes from years of practice looking at illustrations like that, watching a lot of samurai type movies or, or animation, and seeing the tilt. So we have that. I know the I know the arms gonna come out of here. Arms gonna, arms gonna come out of here. It's kind of tilting forward, so it's kind of like that. I know where the sword is gonna be popping out of. It's gonna be somewhere here, so I know that his his fist is gonna be somewhere here, holding the container of of the of the blade, and then. We know it starts here, it finishes here. We're gonna see, all oh, because he's tilting, we're gonna see more of the lower arm. And then less of the, you know, biceps and triceps and stuff like that, but we'll still see them. And then we know what parts are gonna be blocked because, be, uh, because of how we've kind of started just constructing this body to do what we want. If it's something where we still want to see the rest of the sword, at least the container of it, just to have it there, have it at the back of our mind so we know where it is. And that means the hilt of the sword is going to be somewhere here so we know where his other uh, fist is going to be. So now we just have, have to connect the dots to that. Elbow will be somewhere here. And you just do that connection. And you make it easier, you can draw, you can erase parts of it. So you can see it clearing. And that's kind of how you just keep constructing until you get what you want. Again, it helps with a lot of practice. It helps if you're studying other illustrations. It helps if you have a decent understanding of human anatomy. The list goes on. And then the legs can, these parts are going to be blocked because uh, we're not going to see that part of the hill because uh, it's going to be all covered up. And then maybe draw the legs, maybe he's bending down a bit. Tilt the sword still. And then you draw the rest of the leg and this, this, these parts will actually be easy. Again, you just basic shapes to figure out where that goes. We'll take it back a little bit, know where the floor is, so you're consistent there. 
and maybe one feet. If one feet is a little further behind, then you can have another line there just to make sure it's consistent. Because it, it wouldn't make sense if this uh, this leg and this leg ended on the same on the same line. So this would be something here. And maybe this leg is coming coming forward a little bit. You're almost thinking of the feet and parts. You have that, the back, the front. This is where the you know the ankle is going to be, and then you have enough space for for the toes. So you're think breaking these breaking the body parts down into several parts, and knowing where all the joints of the bodies are, and you're, you're doing different things with it. So the legs, this this part. I know the joint comes here, I can see here, a slight tilt there, a slight tilt here, and then where the toes are going to be even for the tilt. We're not going to see the back. Excuse me. And that's kind of how you think throughout. And throughout this phase, I'm just constructing this pose of a samurai. And then the next would be me going into more detail, giving it, uh, maybe putting uh, having a more defined sketch, giving it clothes, hair, um, and that's how we just keep going with that. So with this rough sketch, maybe pull it back to 30, go to pencils, um, go to pencils, and then, you know, we can zoom in and try to give it a more detailed look. Eyes are gonna be there. And the hair, whatever. The ears are gonna be somewhere there. And this is just my approach to things. Everybody can have the their own approaches, maybe with slight variations of how they wanna put things together. There. And also in this phase, you can kind of make alterations if things don't look as well as you'd like. So we probably won't see as much of this shoulder doing all this stuff because we're just going to see more shoulder, more of the shoulder here than here because the head's going to be blocking it. So you're making slight alterations here and there to make it work. And that comes with, you know, a lot of practice, especially if you've Kind of drawn the same thing over and over. Uh, maybe sometimes you can use the movement of clothing to suggest uh, uh, to suggest uh, the motion of the hand. So it's almost like the character here is reaching for that sword. Hilt again. Practice when you if you I don't know how many swords you guys have drawn, but it kind of comes together. Uh, so in this in this case, we don't we don't even have to worry about drawing the other hand as much because it's it's kind of blocked, right? Let's give him a beard. Why not? Make him look a little. Uh, a little older. Completely random character. Didn't think about this too much. Coming up with this whole thing on the fly. Give him an eye patch. Again, why not? And here we have hands. Those you know, kind of samurai pants. Can take some liberties. Here and there. And this is how I put all these things together. 
I'm going to clear a shot of, you hit a shortcut H for a hand, and you can click and just drag and go to the place you want. I hit go back to B. And we give him, this is uh, his feet. Have just quick lines to just suggest the toes. And again, this is still a pretty rough sketch, but you can just keep going and keep going until you get what you want and you're, you've done all the thinking here in this phase where you don't have to worry too much about how correct, how accurate it is, how accurate it looks, and you're just, just having fun, really. But when it's time to get to the actual inking, sorry. See, sketch. Oops. Yes. Okay, put up that. Uh, shortcut for that. If you want to uh, eye drop and pick a color, you can just hold Alt on that layer, just hit it, and then you're you're on the color you want. And now we get to see the feet side view over here with this one. Pretty, pretty fun. And this is what you kind of have to keep doing until you get what you want. So I have a very simple looking uh, character here. Nothing too crazy. And everything's pretty straightforward. And then, then the, the last one would be to then go in with more detail and have it be this is where you're giving all your thought and you you you're, you have pay, well not all your zero thought you're just tracing but you you need a lot of uh, patience to make sure you're getting the exact lines you actually want and maybe even improving the original illustration now a lot of this takes takes time uh, uh, as you would imagine and the more practice you have in some cases you might actually have the pencil step and the rough sketch step combined where you have it you know you you maybe you want to work fast and you have it you're on a deadline and you've done this so many times that you don't need you don't need to break those two steps or separate them you can have them all in one go where the initial sketch is practically completed and uh, you're only you, you only have one step before you get into the actual tracing clips your paint the brush option here I use this for my uh, comic pages when I ink tradition uh, ink digitally And I, I, I think it looks really good. It comes out really good, really nice. And that's how, and this is kind of what we put together until we get what we want for, until we like, you're done inking and you you know get what you want. Another thing is sometimes you can turn off the other layers just to see how everything's coming together. And one thing I do to fill in the blacks is I hit a W, I make sure it's on refer other layers to select, and I just select the part I want. In some cases, you might want to expand the selection area by a pixel and then fill in the black and these are the steps that you just kind of go through to put it together here i've even turned off the initial rough sketch layer because we don't even need to look at that anymore uh and then we just keep working from here 
and that's kind of how I put it together. Uh, I'll do I'll do one where I actually finish the illustration uh, at the end while answering questions. But uh, while I'm doing some other sketches, I want to kind of talk about. I'm gonna right click here and put it all in a layer, create folder and insert. Now just selecting all of it and do, hitting that will put it all in a folder, and I can just turn switch them all off for now and just going to be experimenting with other sketches. But one of the ways I think would be best if you guys are out there and you want to learn how to practice this stuff and you're seeing me put it, put this together real quick and you know maybe it seems a little overwhelming and um, seems a little overwhelming and hard to, hard to just grasp immediately that is on purpose. It's not easy. It takes time to put together. It takes time to learn. But one of the ways that I learned to do stuff like this was to see if I can show you guys over here. I did illustrations. I, I did pr uh, videos where I practiced on several poses. And I, I, I put them together. See some samurai ones here. And this is from looking at reference and learning. And you know, you guys can go look at that another time. But you basically just work uh, sketching several poses and expanding your knowledge on the topic, just learning overall. Sometimes you see those poses. Remember those illustrations that I told you, if, you, if I see something I like, I just grab it. It could be from a film. Maybe the camera angle is like really low and I, I have trouble drawing characters from that angle. I save that and I use it to practice. And how I use that to practice, in fact, uh, a shot comes to mind right now from the film Departed. Uh, there was a scene, well, I don't want to spoil it, but there was a scene where we get to see the character in an elevator, uh, see that, I believe, your badge on their belt or, or hip or whatever, and we're looking up at the character. And I remember grabbing that, I believe it was Matt Damon, grabbing that. You know, you look at you look at that head, and you know, looking from above, we have the head over here. Put the guidelines just to let you know the character is kind of looking ahead. The ears are going to be somewhere here. The other ear is going to be a little blocked, so we won't see all of it, but also be really low, right? And this is this is very different from let's say looking at the character head on. And the ears are somewhere here. When you're looking above, it's almost like they come really low. And then you have the nose somewhere here. We're seeing a whole, <laughs> seeing a lot more nostril, and something like that. So you're figuring all the stuff out in the sketch sketch phase. You know the eyes are going to be here, somewhere there, and we'll see less forehead. We won't see. We almost won't see the neck at all because of uh, because of the angle. And with something like this, and the badge was somewhere. The the belt was somewhere here, and the badge was here. Have your buttons. Or I can't remember the exact clothing. Well, something like that. Everything like it's a really tight angle, and it was something like this. I I I I I remember having a lot of trouble drawing characters from this angle, and I remember stealing. So so sometimes you need to look at those poses and practice with them. And how you practice with them is you draw them with reference. You're looking at them, and sometimes it can take. Uh, maybe simpler illustrations and in cases maybe another another illustrator that you admire take their sketches uh, and their dynamic poses and you sketch those poses with reference and you try to be as accurate as you can be you try to be as accurate as you can be let's say like maybe and you have to be honest with yourself as well um, and give it your best shot and try to be as as accurate as you can be with let's say in the 90 percent and you're drawing it with reference until you yeah and you're having several iterations so you're drawing the same uh, pose over and over the same iteration uh the same pose have several iterations and you want to make sure you're getting better 
each time with reference. And you also want to make sure you're timing yourself so you, you become faster. Because uh, being able to, you don't want to spend too much time drawing the same thing over and over, especially in this sketch phase. There's not, you shouldn't spend too much time doing it. It's the, the you just want to know where things are placed and you want to be accurate with it. So you use that as reference. Try to make sure you're in the 90%, do several iterations of it and you're getting faster. And then you want to try and draw the same thing without reference, the same pose, everything without reference. And this time, still trying to aim for uh, accuracy within 90 90%, 90%. Uh, and then it'll be a little easier because you, you, you're you used to that pose. And once you're able to draw that same pose without looking and you're really close to it, you know, you, you, you learned what you want to learn from that pose, you can start to experiment with that same pose. So let's say the original illustration if this was, I remember I, uh, there was like a Captain America pose, just maybe charging at you here, just leaping. And it was something like that. We don't get to see the lower part of the leg, but we see, we see uh, some of the feet. And the other leg is a little down, so we see something like that. This is the shield, so we don't even have to worry about the other arm as much. And then the other arm, uh, the, his other arm, it's kind of backwards over there. Okay, stuff, blah, blah, blah. Let me reduce the size of the head but just a little, just a tad. So that comes with understanding body proportions and you know what parts of the body shouldn't be should like shouldn't look ridiculous, and the the head shouldn't like the proportion of the head, which is like I believe the head is anywhere from six to seven and a half the rest of the body in height. So this kind of pose, I saw something like this in Captain America, and I would take that pose, and maybe I'll change it to Wolverine. And when I'm doing my version and I've learned it, I've drawn it with reference, I've drawn it without reference enough times where I, I don't need to look at it anymore. I switch it up during uh, experimentation. So this takes time, right? It's not going to happen overnight. So, you know, you, you have to practice regardless. These are just designed to, I hope, to speed up that process for you. And I'll change it, I'll change it a little bit if I wanted to use the same pose, but so I'll change it to Wolverine a little bit. So put the little claws, and now the other arm, I'm doing something with that. Rather, rather than it completely blocked with the Captain America shield. And I'm changing the costume. And so that's kind of how you experiment and you be able to come up with original poses because you've mastered that original, the initial pose. You've experimented with it enough times where you've picked up things even subconsciously to where you are now comfortable and also you built some confidence to then tweak it around and um, create something completely new. So I did this for poses, I did this for uh, hand gestures, as you will see, I did hand gestures, I you know fooled around there like, like a samurai one and I did some dynamic poses and you know these are videos where you kind of these are honestly after I've already done some practice with them, so I'm just kind of fooling around. And, the, and they were from sketches from a, a different artist that I found on DeviantArt. You know, kind of, I know one of the, it was not one artist, but there were several artists. I know one of them was uh, LaShawn Thomas, and this was years ago, see, like 2015. Uh, so I used that to practice in the beginning. So uh, hand gestures was another just understanding fingers i know a lot of people have have trouble drawing hands now i don't have trouble drawing hands as much honestly they're one of the easiest things for me to put together now at least in my style in my style of drawing and you you do this enough times and you'll be able to come up with your own original original poses or hand gestures or whatever. Here, 
this. So the fingernails. Again, this is still that very rough sketch, so nothing, nothing crazy is going on. Have a you have the thumb. One of the cool things with uh, fingernails is all, depending on how depending on how the finger is bent, you also have that little curve in the fingernails to really let it know, let people see what's going on. So you see this very simple, simply put together. The pinky is blocked. You know, sometimes you see I see I see creators or artists struggle drawing hands because they're they're trying to draw it all. Sometimes it's actually it's actually been made easy for you. Like I like we saw with the shield, we didn't need to worry about the other hand because it was blocked. So same thing with drawing certain body parts or say fingers. We don't have to worry about this finger because it's completely blocked. We don't have to worry about parts of this finger because it's blocked. And you know, same same deal here. Some of it because of how it's bent, it seems short in the illustration, but it's actually it's actually it's actually longer. It just seems short because of how it's bent. I'm gonna erase part of a little Wolverine here and just maybe continue this arm. And in some cases, you might even be able to start your illustrations. Usually, I, I start my illustrations with the with a head, but in some cases, you might actually be able to, if you learn all this kind of stuff, you might be able to start your illustration from weird positions like the arm that we just started with here. And then you can graduate to, say, drawing female, uh, female bodies and that female anatomy because things get a little trickier there. But it's the same practice. The, 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 the way I just told you guys how to practice or how I, at least how I did it, that was my approach to literally learning everything, whether it be drawing backgrounds, drawing um, hands, feet, hair, you name it. Certain hairstyles, you name it. Here we have the character kind of almost doing like a, some kind of kung fu pose. So the head kind of has to be tilted sideways or tilting a certain way to just come off more natural. That comes with, again, studying, uh, studying other, studying from real life uh, or other illustrations. Sometimes it's best to start with real life because you will be grounded. And um, it, it's basically knowing the foundations before you actually break out and start breaking the rules. So know the rules before you can break the rules. So here I'm going to, I'm just gonna, gonna remove this, move our uh, ugly Matt Damon. Here. Get this, this size. Again, that's just, a, that was just a simple, hit shortcut M, marquee tool, I selected the parts. There are other shapes you can use to select. You can be more specific with a polyline tool or the selection pen, but just keep this simple here. And then you hit a control T, you'll be able to move around, scale and resize and rotate and whatever. And sometimes you can actually do that if you need to uh, for your sketch, not just moving it around, but to actually also resize parts of it if you feel the if you feel like the anatomy or the pose could use that change. Here, again, part of the shoulder is gonna be blocked. We can do something here where I know that maybe I want, I want part of this hand to, he has another fist kind of blocking part of his face. And it just makes everything look more organic, See, drawing the fingers, best way is you have your shape. There's an upper side of the uh, upper side of it because it's there's like a perspective just for the hand itself. I have that first top, and this is the part where the finger is going to be popping out of. You have the first top, 
and then it's almost like drawing two bumps here and we have that perspective to it so it's getting smaller as you go down the thumb is going to come out of here finger 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 come out of here so you, you use this space just think about it uh bring all your all the things you've learned from other illustrations and you do all the thinking and the, there so i know the thumb's gonna come out here and this is a pose i literally just i, I didn't plan on this i didn't plan on it at all and this side will come out normally but i can tweak it a little bit more organic i can have it come out here come out here it's almost like the hand is bending like play around with your hand and you can do some come up with some really cool poses and you know things from that you know part of the face is going to be blocked and that face is not done you know i can go in later add more hair to it and i'm not really thinking about all of that just yet fingers doing all sorts of crazy things maybe bending it a little bit you have to know where the joints are what parts are relaxed what parts aren't and that will just allow you some freedom. Let's do something. Let's do, do some kind of crouching tiger, hidden fist, whatever. But this is how you just figure figure it out until you you are ready to go. Know where all the joints are and like just bend them a little bit. until you get what you want. Maybe my, my, my pinky there might be a little too small. Have your thumb over here. And the, be, because of this angle, because of the thumb is kind of facing towards us, the fingernail would just seem thinner in, in a way. And that's that, you know? Then you kind of connect the dots, but you don't have to worry about it too much because a lot of it is blocked. But again, it comes with it comes with a lot of practice of putting stuff like this together. All right, do you want to continue drawing this image yeah. or do you have anything I else? Think not, uh, I think, <laughs> I think that'll be it. And I, I think um, hopefully people kind of get the gist of it. Yeah. And uh, I'll just be finishing this illustration as as maybe questions can come in. Okay, great. So uh, most important question first, uh, we heard your cat. What's the name? The name of the cat is Lelouch. Because it has, <laughs> a, it has two two different color eyes. Yeah, oh. something. Sometimes I call it, I call Lelouch, Little Meow Meow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, let's get into the, the art questions. Um, do you have a standard brush set that you use for your for your work? Um, Clip Studio Paint kind of makes it easy. Uh, when I'm doing, if I'm going to ink something traditionally, no, sorry, digitally, I just use the G pen and uh, depending on the size of the page, uh, I use it, the, the size, the brush size over here changes um, based off of say, just for line variation reasons. So for instance, if we were inking this, let's reduce the opacity over here, if we're inking this, I would pick uh, the G, the real G pen, take it black and I'll, the, the line weight for the finger here will be thicker than say what I would what I would use for the face over here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Might not be this exactly, but it, yeah. it, it, that that's kind of like my uh, thought process. And then you can play around with the anti-aliasing. It's it's really up to you. But for me, I use uh, the anti-aliasing somewhere one of these. Uh, I don't I don't really mess around with the opacity and the brush size varies it, it really varies on the size of the panel the size of the illustration the size of you know whatever whatever I'm drawing mm -hmm. and uh, I don't mess I, with clip studio paint I don't have to mess around with the settings as much to 
kind of get results I want. And the results will be similar to something like this. <laughs> okay. Um, do, you talked a lot about references and you have your own YouTube channel where you teach people a lot about um, your techniques. Do you have any, any specific reference uh, recommendations? Or do you hey guys. Just... Uh, reference recommend like uh, I used to, I, I can, uh, I, I use, when I was doing these, if you look at these, if you look at these reference uh, recommendations, I used a lot of, uh, again, I, I was picking reference from anywhere. It was film, animation, you name it. But most of these, which I think helped me a lot, were just sketches, just sketches from one uh, from my favorite, from my favorite uh, illustrations, illustrators at the time and uh, artists at the time. So one of them was LaShawn Thomas. And I believe you can find a lot of those stuff on DeviantArt. I feel like I even have on my on my favorites on my DeviantArt, I have mm -hmm. I have it in a folder somewhere, and it's just a bunch of sketches of different poses, different characters doing all sorts of stuff, male, female, different body sizes, and I was just using those to just get me used to drawing like that, and not worrying about putting any clothing on the character, not worrying about any of that, just getting myself used to drawing. The human body in very weird dynamic poses different camera angles you can see me even right there i was you know experimenting moving the feet moving the feet uh, away from maybe what it was originally and maybe you see playing around with putting clothing on the character giving a little hair and just doing stuff like this over and 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 over with a lot of iteration would be best so i recommend very simple so you can do a lot uh, very simple sketches from your favorite creators, wherever you can find them and putting that together. Or there are, I believe there's a site, sorry, that it, it, it leaves my mind right now, but mm -hmm. it, it would give you, it would show you several, it will show you several models doing poses. So th these are like real people. And it'll, it will time you like 30 seconds to sketch as much as you can. So you're just putting the, it, it, it also helps loosen you and your, um, your wrist, just getting getting you into that zone to mm -hmm. make you understand that it's less about getting drawn it exactly and just more about learning what you can from what you're seeing. So live live drawing is is good. I actually took a class recently, live naked model in the, in the middle of class, and you draw that and you learn line gestures, line weight, all that kind of stuff. And just doing a lot of it will help, but. It depends on you, really, on what you're actually, what you want to get out of it. Yeah. Um, would you generally say that using 3D models is not so good? Or if you're in a hurry, would that also be an option? Um, I think using 3D models after you, if once you've gone through the this phase, then I think 3D models are good to use. I think if you use 3D models right from the jump, one, you might start to rely on them too much. And two, if you don't understand the pose originally, if you don't know the foundation before you're trying to break the rules, sometimes using 3D models can make your illustration look stiff, right? So for me, if I use a 3D model to maybe understand a, a certain pose better, I would actually just be looking at the 3D model to just understand better where things are uh, positioned. Maybe it's from a different, uh, from a difficult angle. So I just want to know where things are positioned uh have a stronger understanding of that and then that's all i'll need i wouldn't actually need to trace it or do anything like that now again if you've done if you've gone through this phase of learning how to at least draw to a degree without it when you're actually using it you'll be much better equipped to use it and make your illustration look more dynamic and uh fluid versus just using it from the jump it would uh, it, most most uh, most times when I see people either use 3D models or use just trace. Say you you know those dolls that you bend the mm. bend the joints. You use stuff like that. The illustration while might be accurate accurately placed, they just lose a lot of fluidity in some places because the create the illustrator maybe doesn't have that strong of a foundation. Okay. Great. Um, when you draw your, your manga and 
um, how long do you usually take for a panel or a page? Do you have a, a rough estimate for that? Um, it depends on the page. There are some pages that are more complicated than others. It takes, it, it, it generally, I would say it takes like, it takes like, uh, maybe I shouldn't show you that page, but uh, generally, <laughs> generally it takes like, um, I'd say, depending on the page, on average, it'll take like an hour to sketch it out and then uh, an hour to ink and then mm -hmm. another hour to, you know, do all this stuff, adding the tones and put in like the words uh, and just clean it up and make it look presentable and professional. So mm -hmm. on average, a page, on average, a page, I'll say maybe takes three, three hours and then uh, but, you know, there are things that come before that. There are things that if it's a page for, you know, a long series, you had to spend time writing it. You have from the script, you then develop that storyboard or uh, just the thumbnail of how the pages are going to be placed and just thumbnails of the page itself. Like, again, similar to similar to th this illustration where you have this phase with the sketch, you see all in doing all the thinking, you do all the thinking for your manga pages in that storyboard thumbnail phase and you know have it prepared to where you want it where you want it to be before you then go in and start doing putting in details because if you start putting in details and you make a mistake somewhere or you don't like how it comes out there you you have a lot of editing and cleaning up to do versus doing all that in the early phases so you do the script I create like a storyboard of all the pages from that script and sometimes it goes back and forth where the storyboard influences the script and where I change things on the original script and just back and forth. I do all the thinking there and then I take it to actually start creating the pages and that takes about on average three, four hours per page. Hmm. How, how much time do you usually spend drawing per day as a professional artist? Um, just normal uh, anywhere from five to 12 hours. There are days where you have to take a break because you don't want to spend too, spend all your days mm -hmm. sitting down. You want to, you know, have to be, you know, have to try to be active, even though the current state of things uh, have, has everyone on some kind of lockdown, so you don't have a choice. <laughs> but uh, I, I spend, I spend uh, five to 12 hours a day, maybe more, just working. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that's mm -hmm. drawing, Sometimes that's writing and um, fine tuning the story, which can also be a lot of fun. I find that recently, especially, I've had a lot of fun just coming up with ideas and putting that together and just being excited of you know, being excited, taking those ideas and putting pen to uh, putting pen to paper. Yeah, great. Um, can you really quick um, give an introduction to Saturday? Um, I think there was a question if it's a hosting site like Webtoons. No, it is not. Uh, Sad day AM is uh, digital. Again, uh, we have our app. We have our app that you guys can go check out. It is available on uh, Android, Amazon, uh, Amazon, Amazon uh, iOS, and all of that. And we have several series that are published within the magazine. So it's the Sad day AM app. It's free. We have the latest issue of the latest issues of Sad Day AM free on the app for you guys to read. And we're a digital magazine similar to like a Shonen Jump. Um, and each issue features certain series within it. So Sad Day AM has a set of series like mine, uh, which is Apple Black that we've kind of I've shown a little bit of. And I also have Bacossi and Saturday PM. Saturday PM is also a digital magazine, but it's more, if Saturday AM is the shonen jump or the more shonen titles, PM is the more sane titles where the characters get to the series there, explore more mature themes. And we have a new magazine coming out uh, called Saturday Brunch, which, is, which all features our first sports manga, Kill Shot about volleyball. But Brunch overall explores more, uh, more female friendly, more shoujo, more LGBT. Even though some of that you can still find inside the AM and PM, but Brunch kind of 
focuses on that a whole lot more, giving a voice to that a whole lot more. So Saturday AM, PM, and brunch are all on the Saturday AM app. Um, and we also have Fan Art Friday on the app, which just explore is just a magazine, it's a free magazine within the app that explores uh, fan art and the magazine kind of interviews certain illust illustrators that do a lot of fan art. And I, I believe the first issue was on Demon Slayer and we kind of do that. So we're a digital magazine. We find our artists. We, we're not a hosting site like, a, well, well, not just find our artists, but our artists come to us. We have contests in, uh, in play where people can send contest, content to us and pitch to us. And then you can get, you, you get picked to be inside our magazine. And then we have our things structured for each creator separately. Uh, one of the cool things about us is that every creator owns your own property 100%. Um, and we take pride in uh, trying to empower creators uh, while still giving them a voice and opportunities in spaces that usually might be only occupied by big companies and trying to do so recently we had uh one of our one of our uh series in fact not all, all our series are licensed in in uh in several ways on several other apps other companies we have toys being made soon so we're we're not like webtoon in the sense that anybody can just upload their stuff on there we we're like we we're not that easy to get into <laughs> <laughs> but uh we we're more in tune with say uh shonen jump if you're familiar with that yeah and so, the series so there, one, of, one of the hands again the toys getting made of that other series yeah. like massive massively multiplayer world of ghosts similar to like a it's kind of like a, a pokemon digimon will get toys made of that <laughs> apple black getting some toys so we we're we're, we're doing stuff and um <laughs> Uh, we're growing. We're growing rapidly, uh, but we're not like Webtoon. We, we don't. We're not like Webtoon or Smack Chiefs or uh, sites like that. You know. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I think we're like near the end now. So I have one one last question for you. Um, what makes a good action pose? For me, I like action. It, it's it's a uh, subjective. It's subjective. Uh, yeah. But uh, for me, I like poses that are, you know, have something memorable. Like this here, I didn't plan for this, for this pose, but I like how it's coming together. I like that uh, you can see some depth in there, how this is really popping at you. We see the head in the middle, which honestly, what would happen here is I'll actually move this, move the head forward a little more. But I like poses that are dynamic, that have that show depth, have some foreshortening in them, um that really that that do well with uh line variation and interact with the environment a little bit sometimes let's say you see this pose and then you can see like maybe certain uh particles moving around it, it's a it's a it's a difficult question to answer because you can find things that you like about all sorts of poses for different reasons and uh, I, I guess it just depends on also if it fits if it fits where it's being placed right if it fits maybe a certain part of the series better than other parts uh it's a it's kind of like a loaded question and hard to hard to answer but sometimes when you look at it, it i think the best way would be for you to answer that question answer that question for your for yourself as a as an admirer of comics or animation and things like that what are your favorite poses what do you look for like try to figure out why you like certain poses and then go from there um and once you once you figure that out then you know what you're looking for you know how to complement your own style and i feel like that that that'll be the better approach because there isn't really one way to just answer like oh uh, a good action pose must have X, Y, Z. It's a little, it, it depends, but I find the the most interesting ones that I find for me are the ones that just keep me looking at them for, for a, a long time. I, I try to do that with my series, Apple Black. I see a lot of that in series like um, One Punch Man with a strong sense of motion, right? If it's a kick, you can really feel that kick. kick. So rather than, let's say you just join the, you, you draw the feet, uh, say you draw, you draw the leg or whatever, 
doing like a kick. Sometimes you can see the motion and the lines and the way it's being illustrated. So it's it's a it's a it's a combination of things, and I think it works best if you find out what that what that means to you and seeing how you can translate that into your own work. It's not that straightforward of an answer, especially seeing how subjective it can be. Of course. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. I think that's it for today in terms of questions. Yeah. Thank you so much, Joanna. Thank you so much, White Manga. I know this is a huge topic and um, we can definitely um, have more uh, inspiration from, from your own channel and also um, I'm going to thank all the people who attended and remind you that for more information and uh, learn more about Clip Studio Paint, visit our website clipstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com. Please visit um, Sales Web, uh, which is uh, Clip Studio Paint uh, YouTube channel and also our Graphicsly YouTube channel. There are more webinars and you can see more artists and other familiar topics. And also for more information about White Manga and Saturday AM, please visit his Instagram. I know there are more, more videos regarding to poses and other manga style things uh, made by White Manga on his YouTube channel and also visit uh, SaturdayAM.com uh, uh, website. And nothing more to say. Thank you so much, uh, White Manga, for your time. Uh, I know this is a huge topic and we really enjoy all the things that you share with us today. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Guys for, thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for thanks to Clip Studio Paint, Graphicsly, uh, and obviously the Sad AM team for putting, all, putting this all together. I hope you guys go again, check out the AM app, uh, the YouTube channel, White Manga TV, Sad AM's YouTube channel, and all the other things that uh, have been mentioned so far. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much, Joanna. Thank you all for attending. And we'll surely share uh, the recording of this uh, webinar on our YouTube channel. So stay tuned. So see you on our next webinar. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.